Welcome back. Now, if you're subscribed, thank you very much for the support. If you're not, please subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, obviously like it if you like the video. Now, today, we're gonna have a very quick look at how to deal with hard pan lies. Now, here in the UK, it's starting to really get hot. We've had a dry spell for a few weeks, an odd storm the last couple of days, uh, but nowhere near enough to get green back onto the grass. You can see it's burning up everywhere. And you're gonna find yourself, not just in this country, but other countries also, with situations where you have very little grass and very firm base underneath the golf ball. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to get out of trouble, strike it well from here, and control your ball flight. All right, so as you can see, I've got no flag. I have my Yeti. I'm not supported by them yet, by the way. Um, bottle as a simulated hole at the back of the green. Uh, other camera setup here, so you can see a different viewpoint. I'm gonna show you a few close-up details of things you need to know before you try and attack this kind of shot. So let's have a look at what the problem is and how to deal with it. Now, the main issue here is there is no give underneath the golf ball, right? So this thing is sat effectively on a runway, All right? Now, if the control of low point isn't very good, your contact with the ball is going to suffer, right? You're not going to dig the leading edge in. That's just not going to happen. We actually have the opposite issue here, and that is exposing too much or using too much bounce. Now, you don't hear that very often. You know, people try and use the bounce all the time. They like the term. I'm going to say in this situation, the last thing you want to do is use the bounce, but you need to know how to negate it. So I'm going to whiz over to this camera and show you what I'm talking about on this wedge. Right, so here we are. We've got the 14. Uh, this is a 60 degree. It's an H grind. You'll see there's a little bit of shaping down in here, all right, there is a camber to the sole. We have some heel relief and some toe relief. Kind of hold the profile up this way and you'll see there's a high point right here. It dips down towards this edge, dips down right here. Okay, now you guys need to know how to use these parts of the club effectively. So if I can use those parts of the club effectively and avoid the belly or the fat part of the wedge, I'm gonna be able to get the leading edge of the club lower on the golf ball. There's obviously a limit to how low you can get. You're not gonna slide underneath it like you might do from light rough or thick rough. There's going to be a limit to how deep you can really get so we have to get this leading edge as close to the ground as possible now this situation i've got plenty of space right i can roll this in i can play a nice low flight no issue i could drop club i could play a putting stroke whatever the reason i'm here though is because if i were a little bit further from the green it might be a little bit more realistic you wouldn't put it you wouldn't chip it with a nine iron this is the only dry spot I can find. Back where the camera is and beyond, it's still a little bit too green. Uh, the green keeper's doing a great job leaving grass on the golf course to avoid this happening. They have to do it. Um, that said, I'm going to show you how to play a low one with your 60, and I'm show you how to play something a bit more loft. And that's the real challenge from this, is getting the ball to go up. So with the low one, I'm going to use the toe end of the club. I'm going to sit the toe end lower than the heel, that's going to take this camera or this bounce away from the surface and drop this leading edge closer to the turf. Leave the face fairly square, maybe a hair open, a little bit of left aim. And my focus here is to make sure that I do strike the ground very close to the golf ball with this toe end. I don't want to mess around with the flat part of the sole at all. Okay, came up pretty good. A little bit higher than I was expecting. There is a slight upslope here that you can't quite see on the camera. And that probably just launched it a bit higher than I thought it would, but the strike was great. As you can see, it had spin. When it's dry and it's firm and it's bare, the ball does come out a little bit hot, but it always spins more than it would do from a normal fairway or grass, right? But how do we go up higher? Got to start to use the other end of the golf club. Okay, because if I play toe end and I just rotate the shaft open, that bounce is going to come into play again. Alternatively, if I play the face open and play heel down, there's a little bit more relief here, there's a little bit more shape. Let's go over there again. There's a little bit more shape at this end of the golf club, which gives me a little bit more relief in the heel than I have in the toe. So I'm going to sit the heel down, I'm going to play the face open, and I'm just going to preempt this by saying this isn't for everyone. I am going to try and strike the ball somewhat closer to the heel than the centre of the golf club. Okay, center of the golf is gonna be higher off the ground. This leading edge is higher up here. I'm gonna try and use the heel to strike the ground and to strike the ball. That should allow me to play the most loft I can within reason and get some decent trajectory on it. So let's give it a whirl. Set the face open, set the heel down. It's a little scary, I'm not gonna to lie to you. It's a little scary to mess around with the heel. Ooh, 
more high. Actually, just bounced on me a little bit. All right, bounced on me a touch. So it came off a little bit hot. Trajectory was okay. I think I can do a better job than that, though. Let's go in again. Probably just hedged my bets a little bit. Got a little bit anxious on the heel. That's better. That was better. So you can get some flight in it, but we're going to explore, right? We're going to mess around a little bit. I'm going to as open as I can. Drop that heel to the point where I've not got much club face to play with. See if I can get a little bit more height or have I squeezed all I can out of it. There's a little bit more. All right, pretty good now. The alternative I said is you could go toe down face open, but I think it exposes a little bit too much bounce and when you start to get extreme, but we'll give it a go anyway. So now we're going toe down face open. I can just see that leading edge sat up a little bit more. Again, I'm going to explore the limit. Actually came out great, didn't it? Um, that came out really, really well. So long story short, I can max out the height if I start to use the heel end. I have the low shot for sure from the toe end, and I have a higher shot than I thought I could play toe end as well. Now, you can't apply this every golf course you have to play on, right? If I go to a Lynx course that's baked out, it's gonna play even harder than this thing, all right? There's the tiniest, tiniest little bit of give, which I think the toe end or toe down face open kind of gave me a bit more elevation than I was expecting because there's a small amount. Right, so you need to avoid using the fat of the bounce unless there is some give under the golf ball. As soon as it's tight and firm, go toe down, heel down, if you have a club like this one that's designed for that purpose.